Hey everyone, it's Dr. Gail and this is your Healthy Living Vlog where I help empower parents with the knowledge to help make healthy decisions for their kids. It has been a very long year. At the time of this recording, it's been one year plus um, of COVID-19 pandemic. And so we have had a lot of kids that have been isolated from their friends. They've been cut off from things like nutritious school meals, sports, and just had a complete disruption of the routines. So it's been this perfect storm for our kids to just be moving less and less and less and snacking more and more and more. If your family has been eating more high calorie processed foods and spending more time on screens, you are not alone. It's been pretty much widespread, but we're now needing to really take stock of what the consequences of that lifestyle for the past year has been. We are seeing that these changes have put more of our children at risk for obesity. And of course, anyone that has obesity is at higher risk for things, um, serious health conditions. So we've been seeing in the office almost an astronomical increase in things like pre-diabetes and things like diabetes itself, high blood pressure. And of course, any of our kids with obesity or any of these serious health conditions are at higher risk for certain infections um, or for complications with certain certain infections like COVID-19. And so we really want to take stock of what can we do now to help change that narrative and to help make sure our kids are living healthy, happy lives. So what can we do as parents? As parents, there are some small changes we can start to make. We can start to make sure that we're offering our children more fruits and vegetables. And I know, I know, we're gonna talk about in, in more future vid videos or even on posts, just ways and ideas to help our picky eaters get over those humps of eating fruits and vegetables. But just the act of offering it and making it more readily available is one way to start to change the way that they see food and change the way that they see snacking. The second really important part is to start to create schedules. We wanna create schedules for meals. We wanna create schedules for snacks. We wanna create schedules for physical activity because then that helps us move away from doing all of that mindless eating and just kind of sitting around and start to look more at what we're actually putting into our bodies. So schedules are actually really important. And that's one of the big things that we lost when, especially when a lot of kids came out of school, schedules completely disrupted. We want to make sure that as parents, we're keeping healthy food in the home and trying to eliminate or limit unhealthy foods. And when we talk about healthy foods or unhealthy foods, we really just want to keep things readily available that have more nutritional bang for their buck. And I'll go into more detail about that through posts and through videos along the way. We also can help to motivate movement in our kids by limiting their screen time. It's amazing what happens when we say, okay, turn it off. They'll have to find something to do. And even if it's something like doing a puzzle or reading a book, they're, bur they're burning more calories and getting more movement in than just sitting and watching a screen. And most of the time, what do we tend to do when we're watching a screen and kind of mindlessly doing something, we'll mindlessly eat as well and just keep packing on calories. Um, and the most, probably the most important thing that we can do is to help model healthy behaviors for our kids. So it's going to be a lot less likely that our kids will eat healthy and exercise if they don't see the most important adults in their lives eating healthy and doing exercise. So even if it's something like trying to carve out 15, 20, 30 minutes a day to move and invite your kids along, maybe you take a family walk, 
Maybe you ride on a bike ride. Maybe you kick a soccer ball around in the yard. And maybe you turn on some music and dance together. But any little bit of movement can start to create that habit in them to where they'll feel like they want their bodies to move as well. So that's all things that we can do as parents. Of course, lean on your pediatricians. Okay, if you're seeing that there has become a major issue um, and you're not sure where to start, ask your pediatrician. We're specialized in helping you do things like, you know, providing referrals if we need counseling for mental health, helping to screen for any possible eating disorders, helping to create personalized plans for helping to meet that challenge of obesity. And if you find that you are having difficulty obtaining things like healthy food, adequate housing, childcare, etc., contact us because we can connect you with the resources to help meet those needs. We're all in this together. We all just want our kids to be healthy and happy and look forward to our next videos and our next posts because we'll start to go into more detail on everything. I hope this was helpful. If you like this, please share it with your friends, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and this is Dr. Gail from Southern Pediatric Clinic, and we'll see you next time. Here at Southern Pediatric Clinic, we are social. You can find us on YouTube where you can subscribe to our vlog and like our videos. You can also see us on Instagram and Facebook, and all of that can be accessed from our website. We absolutely cannot wait to connect with you. Thank you.